Anne Hathaway, 1555-56, the 6th of August 1623, was the wife of William Shakespeare, the English poet, playwright and actor. They were married in 1582, when she was 26 years old. She outlived her husband by seven years. Very little is known about her beyond a few references in legal documents, but her personality and relationship to Shakespeare have been the subject of much speculation by historians and creative writers. Life. Hathaway is believed to have grown up in Shottery, a small village just to the west of Stratford-upon-Avon, Warwickshire, England. She is assumed to have grown up in the farmhouse that was the Hathaway family home, which is located at Shottery and is now a major tourist attraction for the village. Her father, Richard Hathaway, was a yeoman farmer. He died in September 1581 and left his daughter the sum of 10 marks or 6 pounds 13 4d, 6 pounds, 13 shillings and 4 pence, to be paid at the day of her marriage. In her father's will, her name is listed as Agnes, leading to some scholars believing that she should be referred to as Agnes Hathaway. Wedding. Hathaway married Shakespeare in November 1582 while pregnant with the couple's first child, to whom she gave birth six months later. Hathaway was 26 years old, Shakespeare was only 18. This age difference, added to Hathaway's antenuptial pregnancy, has been employed by some historians as evidence that it was a shotgun wedding, forced on a reluctant Shakespeare by the Hathaway family. There is, however, no other evidence for this inference. For a time it was believed that this view was supported by documents from the Episcopal Register at Worcester, which records in Latin the issuing of a wedding license to W. M. Shaxpera and one Annam Waitley of Temple Grafton. The following day, Folk Sand Dells and John Richardson, friends of the Hathaway family from Stratford, signed a surety of £40 as a financial guarantee for the wedding of William Shakespeare and Anne Hathaway. Frank Harris, in The Man Shakespeare, 1909, argued that these documents are evidence that Shakespeare was involved with two women. He had chosen to marry one, Anne Waitley, but when this became known he was immediately forced by Hathaway's family to marry their pregnant relative. Harris believed that Shakespeare's loathing for his wife was measureless because of his entrapment by her and that this was the spur to his decision to leave Stratford and pursue a career in the theatre. However, according to Stanley Wells, writing in the Oxford Companion to Shakespeare, most modern scholars take the view that the name Waitley was almost certainly the result of clerical error. Germaine Greer argues that the age difference between Shakespeare and Hathaway is not evidence that he was forced to marry her, but that he was the one who pursued her. Women such as the orphaned Hathaway often stayed at home to care for younger siblings and married in their late twenties. As a husband Shakespeare offered few prospects, his family had fallen into financial ruin, while Hathaway, from a family in good standing both socially and financially, would have been considered a catch. Furthermore, a handfast or probationary marriage and pregnancy were frequent precursors to legal marriage at the time. Examining the surviving records of Stratford-upon-Avon and nearby villages in the 1580s, Greer argues that two facts stand out quite prominently. First, that a large number of brides went to the altar already pregnant, and second, that autumn, not spring, was the most common time to get married. Shakespeare was bound to marry Hathaway, having made her pregnant, but there is no reason to assume that this had not always been his intention. It is nearly certain that the respective families of the bride and groom had known one another. Married life. Three children were born to Hathaway and her husband, Susanna in 1583 and the twins Hamnet and Judith in 1585. Hamnet died at 11 years old and was buried in Stratford-upon-Avon on the 11th of August 1596 during one of the frequent outbreaks of the bubonic plague. Apart from documents related to her marriage and the birth of her children, the only recorded reference to Hathaway in her lifetime is a curious bequest in the will of her father's shepherd, Thomas Whittington, who died in 1601. Whittington left 40 shillings to the poor of Stratford adding that the money was in the hand of Anne Shakespeare wife unto Master William Shakespeare, and is due dead unto me, being paid to mine executor by the said William Shakespeare or his assigns according to the true meaning of this my will. This passage has been interpreted in several different ways. One view is that Whittington may have lent Anne the money, presumably because she was short of cash while her husband was away. More likely, however, it may have been uncollected wages, or savings held in safekeeping, since the will also lists debts owed to him from her brothers in the same amount. In 1607, Hathaway's daughter Susanna married the local doctor, John Hall, giving birth to Hathaway's and Shakespeare's granddaughter, Elizabeth, the following year. Judith married Thomas Quinney, who was a vintner and tavern owner from a good family, in February 1616 when she was 31 and he was 27. Shakespeare may later have disapproved of this choice when it was discovered that Quinney had made another girl pregnant, also Quinney had failed to obtain a special wedding license needed during Lent, leading to Judith and Thomas being excommunicated on 12 March. Soon afterwards, on 25 March 1616, Shakespeare 
modified his will for Judith to inherit 300 pounds in her own name, leaving Quinny out of the will and giving most of his property to Susanna and her husband. It has sometimes been inferred that Shakespeare came to dislike his wife, but there is no existing documentation or correspondence to support this supposition. For most of their married life, he lived in London, writing and performing his plays, while she remained in Stratford. However, according to John Aubrey, he returned to Stratford for a period every year. When he retired from the theatre in 1613, he chose to live in Stratford with his wife, rather than in London. Shakespeare's Will In his will Shakespeare famously made only one bequest to his wife, his second best bed with the furniture. There is no reference to the best bed, which would have been included in the main bequest to Susanna. This bequest to Anne has often been interpreted as a slight, implying that Anne was in some sense only the second best person in his intimate life. A few explanations have been offered. First, it has been claimed that, according to law, Hathaway was entitled to receive one-third of her husband's estate, regardless of his will, though this has been disputed. It has been speculated that Hathaway was to be supported by her children. Germaine Greer suggests that the bequests were the result of agreements made at the time of Susanna's marriage to Dr. Hall, that she, and thus her husband, inherited the bulk of Shakespeare's estate. Shakespeare had business ventures with Dr. Hall, and consequently appointed John and Susanna as executors of his will. Dr. Hall and Susanna inherited and moved into new place after Shakespeare's death. This would also explain other examples of Shakespeare's will being apparently ungenerous, as in its treatment of his younger daughter Judith. There is indication that Hathaway may have been financially secure in her own right. The National Archives states that beds and other pieces of household furniture were often the sole bequest to a wife and that, customarily, the children would receive the best items and the widow the second best. In Shakespeare's time, the beds of prosperous citizens were expensive affairs, sometimes equivalent in value to a small house. The bequest was thus not as minor as it might seem in modern times. In Elizabethan custom the best bed in the house was reserved for guests. If so, then the bed that Shakespeare bequeathed to Anne could have been their marital bed, and thus not intended to insult her. Burial. A tradition recorded in 1693 is that Hathaway greatly desired to be buried with her husband. In in fact she was interred in a separate grave next to him in the Church of the Holy Trinity, Stratford-upon-Avon. The inscription states, Here lieth the body of Anne wife of William Shakespeare who departed this life the sixth day of August 1623 being of the age of 67 years. A Latin inscription followed which translates as breasts, O mother, milk and life thou didst give. Woe is me, for how great a boon shall I give stones. How much rather would I pray that the good angel should move the stone so that, like Christ's body, thine image might come forth. But my prayers are unavailable availing. Come quickly. Christ, that my mother, though shut within this tomb may rise again and reach the stars. The inscription may have been written by John Hall on behalf of his wife, Anne's daughter, Susanna. Anne in literature. Shakespeare's sonnets. One of Shakespeare's sonnets, number 145, has been claimed to make reference to Anne Hathaway. The words, hate away, may be a pun, in Elizabethan pronunciation, on, Hathaway. It has also been suggested that the next words, and saved my life, would have been indistinguishable in pronunciation from Anne saved my life. The sonnet differs differs from all the others in the length of the lines. Its fairly simple language and syntax have led to suggestions that it was written much earlier than the other, more mature, sonnets. Those lips that love's own hand did make breathed forth the sound that said, I hate, to me that languished for her sake, but when she saw my woeful state straight in her heart did mercy come, chiding that tongue that ever sweet was used in giving gentle doom, and taught it thus anew to greet, I hate, she altered with an end, that follow d it as gentle day doth follow night, who like a fiend from heaven to hell is flown away, I hate, from hate away she threw, and saved my life, saying, not you. Other literature. The following poem about Anne has also been ascribed to Shakespeare, but its language and style are not typical of his verse. It is widely attributed to Charles Dibding, 1748-1814, and may have been written for the Stratford-upon-Avon Shakespeare Festival of 1769. But were it to my fancy given to rate her charms, I'd call them heaven, for though immortal made of clay, angels must love Anne Hathaway, she hath a way so to control, to rapture the imprisoned soul and sweetest heaven on earth display, that to be heaven Anne hath a way, she hath a way, Anne hath a way, to be heaven's self Anne hath a way. Fictional portrayals Anne is depicted in fiction during the 19th century, when Shakespeare starts to become a figure in wider national and popular culture. Emma Severn's novel Anne hath a way, or, Shakespeare in Love, 1845, portrays an idealized romance and happy marriage in an idyllic rural Stratford. She also appears in William Black's 1884 novel Judith Shakespeare about her daughter, 
portrayed as a conventional dutiful wife and concerned parent with a wayward daughter. By the early 20th century a more negative image of Hathaway emerged, following the publication of Frank Harris' books on Shakespeare's love life, and after the discovery that Anne was already pregnant when the couple married. A trend in literature on Hathaway in this period was to imagine her as a sexually incontinent cradle snatcher, or, alternatively, a calculating shrew. More recent literature has included more varied representations of her. Historian Catherine Scheil describes Hathaway as a wife-shaped void used by modern writers as a canvas for expressing contemporary woman's struggles, over-independence, single motherhood, sexual freedom, unfaithful husbands, woman's education and power relations between husband and wife. An adulterous Anne is imagined by James Joyce's character Stephen Dedalus, who makes a number of references to Hathaway. In Ulysses, he speculates that the gift of the infamous second best bed was a punishment for her adultery, and earlier in the same novel, Daedalus and Alice's Shakespeare's marriage with a pun, he chose badly. He was chosen, it seems to me, if others have their will Anne Hathaway. Anne also appears in Hubert Osborne's The Shakespeare Play, c. 1911, and its sequel The Good Men Do, 1917, which dramatizes a meeting between the newly widowed Anne and her supposed old rival for William's love Anne Waitley. Anne is depicted as shrewish in the first play, and as spiteful towards her former rival in the latter. A frosty relationship is also portrayed in Edward Bond's play Bingo, Scenes of Money and Death, 1973, about Shakespeare's last days, and in the 1978 TV series Will Shakespeare, The World's Wife, a collection of poems by Carol Ann Duffy, features a sonnet entitled Anne Hathaway, based on the passage from Shakespeare's will regarding his second best bed. Duffy chooses the view that this would be their marriage bed, and so a memento of their love, not a slight. Anne remembers their lovemaking as a form of romance and drama, unlike the prose written on the best bed used by guests, I hold him in the casket of my widow's head, as he held me upon that next best bed. In Robert Nye's novel Mrs. Shakespeare, The Complete Works, which purports to be Anne's autobiographical reminiscences, Shakespeare buys the best bed with money given to him by the Earl of Southampton. When Anne comes to London, the couple use the bed for wild sexual adventures, in which they engage in role-playing fantasies based on his plays. He refers to the bed he bequeaths her as the second best to remind her of the best bed of their memories. The novel was dramatized for BBC Radio in 1998 with Maggie Steed playing Hathaway. The Connie Willis short story Winter's Tale, which combines factual information about Anne Hathaway with a fictitious Shakespeare identity theory, also characterizes the nature of the relationship as loving and the bequeath of the second best bed as romantically significant. Anne Hathaway appears in Neil Gaiman's comic book section The Tempest, part of the Sandman series. She and Shakespeare share a tumultuous, yet affectionate, relationship. Gaiman's interpretation suggests that Anne deliberately became pregnant in order to force her husband to marry her, but the context implies that neither of them ultimately regret their decision. Through her long-running solo show Mrs. Shakespeare, Will's First and Last Love, 1989, American actress writer Yvonne Hudson has had a long relationship with both the historical and dramatic Anne Hathaway. She depicts Anne and Will as maintaining a friendship despite the challenges inherent to their long separations and tragedies. Mining early and recent scholarship and the complete works, Hudson concurs that evidence of the couple's mutual respect is indeed evident in the plays and sonnets, along with support for the writer's infatuations and possibly adulterous relationships. Hudson also chooses the positive view of the bed bequest, sharing that it may have been only here that I possessed William. Mrs. Shakespeare explores the realities of keeping house without a husband while applying some dramatic license. This allows Anne to have at least a country wife's understanding of her educated spouse's work as she quotes sonnets and soliloquies to convey her feelings. The 2005 play Shakespeare's Will by Canadian playwright Vern Thiessen is similar in form to Hudson's show. It is a one-woman piece that focuses on Anne Hathaway on the day of her husband's funeral. Avril Rowland's Mrs. Shakespeare, 2005, depicts Anne as a multitasking superwoman who runs the home efficiently while also writing her husband's plays in a business-like partnership with him as her promoter, performer. The romantic comedy film Shakespeare in Love provides an example example of the negative view, depicting the marriage as a cold and loveless bond that Shakespeare must escape to find love in London. The same situation occurs in the alternate history novel Ruled Britannia, 2002, in which Shakespeare is finally granted a divorce from Hathaway to marry his new girlfriend after he helps to liberate England from Spanish dominion. A similarly loveless relationship is depicted in the film A Waste of Shame, 2005. The Secret Confessions of Anne Shakespeare, 2010, a novel by Arliss Ryan, also proposes Anne Hathaway as the true author of many of the Shakespeare plays, a claim originally made in 1938. In the novel, Anne follows Will
will to London to support his acting career, as he finds his true calling in writing, Anne's own literary skills flower, leading to a secret collaboration that makes William Shakespeare the foremost playwright in Elizabethan England, Anne Hathaway's cottage. Anne Hathaway's childhood was spent in a house near Stratford in Warwickshire, England. Although it is often called a cottage, it is, in fact, a spacious 12-roomed farmhouse, with several bedrooms, now set in extensive gardens. It was known as Newlands Farm in Shakespeare's day and had more than 90 acre of land attached to it. As in many houses of the period, it has multiple chimneys to spread the heat evenly throughout the house during winter. The largest chimney was used for cooking. It also has visible timber framing, a trademark of vernacular Tudor-style architecture. After the death of Anne's father, the cottage was owned by Anne's brother Bartholomew, and was passed down the Hathaway family until 1846, when financial problems forced them to sell it. It is now owned and managed by the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust, and is open to public visitors as a museum.